Hello, 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 hello. Okay, let's try this one more time. Okay, how's the sound in the Zoom? Perfect. All right, let's do it.
Chicken, <laughs> Jabgibemu <laughs> So today we we come to the the part about you know the visualizing or not or really visualizing is kind of a description of the Amitabha. Buddha's pure land, and uh, you know, if you <clears throat> yes, of sometimes people 
they have uh, some sort of you know like doubt right for example they say that how can guru padma sambhava be born on the lotus you know that's not possible right and uh, some i think some maybe buddhist scholar also they say that oh it's okay guru which is not born in born from a lotus but in uh, some sort of a valley in afghanistan and the valley looks like a lotus that's why it's called lotus you know so you know i'm not saying that who is right or wrong but from my perspective you know i think guru padma sambhava being born in a lotus uh, you know is nothing is not something that is impossible you know because ultimately if you understand that everything that you know if I, everything that happens is due to where is cause and condition when the cause and condition comes anything is possible right why is it possible that for human beings mother's womb can we can give, we can can you know give a rebirth and we can be born from the womb how is that possible right because all the right cause and condition to be you know the condition to be born from the womb you know children are born when the right cause and condition are born from the heat and the you know the moisture animals are being born from the egg you know they are born you know and not only nowadays even the test tube baby also you know from test tube also you can be born in a glass you know you just put the right cause and condition right and whenever we talk of the karma we always think, we always have the tendency to some of us have to think that karma means you know something is only about or i do something like going to a temple or help a poor people is a good karma or i do something bad is a bad karma but karma is not just limited to good or bad karma means that everything that you use everything in the world arises due to cause conditioned for example you have a you know like a delicious food in front of you that food is also karma how you know someone prepared the food cooked it cooked the you know the milk the rice all come together something called something called food happened right grass was eaten by the cow cow digested it and it became a grass became milk milk you stirred in now becomes a butter from the milk and then can transform into ice cream into the yogurt you eat it it become part of your body part of it comes out get recycled back you know so so there's also if you understand the cause and condition you also understand the meaning of nothing exists inherently everything exists due to cause and condition coming together so that is why when you know that's why whenever things since things have arisen out of cause and condition anything is possible right for example you want ice cream usually you will say our oh, ice cream is a very sweet but maybe tomorrow you know one movie celebrity says this is my new ice cream and he put the ice cream and the chili inside this would be hot and ice and fire ice cream now you know and i'm sure after a few time people eat it and some people will like it and they'll put it in the social media you know fire and ice everybody will be having it right it will be very normal right? because so called ice cream also doesn't have inherent reality right cause kind of condition different ingredient changes everything so that is why <clears throat> you know the if you the right now we can't see this because when we see a flower we don't see a flower as a you know existing due to all various cause and condition coming together but we see flower as one single entity one single kind of item you know that exists by itself solidly real inherently existing rather than understanding the so called flower also you take away the petal you take away the moisture whatever it is make there is no such a thing as flower inherently existing right so that is why if you have that kind of understanding then you understand that you know the, this is the reason why our world is called the world of possibility because world arises due to many cause and conditions that is why the world also has a mountain sea river any kind of you know things are possible you can go to vietnam and there's something called ha long bay with hundreds of mountain you can go to some places is of you know the oceans are blue colored there are some lakes have a white colored you know of course you go into the explanation you can say oh because of algae or because of this bacteria you know you explain but basically what you are saying in a nutshell is due to various cause conditions this lake is red this lake is white this is mountain has been shaped so and so due to various cause condition 
So that's why the when you describe the Amitabha Buddha, you know, so describe and explain the Amitabha Buddha pure land, one way of understanding it is that due to various cause the condition, especially the cause and condition of the Buddha Amitabha, you know, Buddha Amitabha's aspiration and the karma he created in his aspiration, you know, the Amitabha Buddha pure land is formed in such and such, right? Or in, if you want to go even kind of a deeper understanding of the Dharma, then in the Mahai, in the Sutra, in, the, in the, one of the teaching, Buddha said that so-called hell realm, you know, who made the hell realm? Which company made the, you know, the iron houses? Who are these people who torture you? Who are they? They are nothing other than your own negative karma. When your negative karma in a negative mind produces these experiences, you know, so basically what Buddha is saying that, you know, is that everything that we are experiencing right now is due to the fact that we have the, this sort of mental state, this sort of physical body, this sort of senses. So we see this world right now, right? For example, if you're born as a color blind, you will, you will see everything, you know, with, with lacking in certain color. You will never see the different colors, you know, which we see. You will never see this world. Because we, you have that kind of eye or that kind of cause condition to see world in that color. Some animals can see many more colors than we can see. Some dog, dogs can smell thousands of you know, the smells that we, we can never experience. If you look at things under microscope, you will see things which are in you know, which a world that is totally different from our world. That's why in the sutra it is said that if there is a water, you know, human being will see it as a water. God may see it as a nectar, you know, animal may see it as their home, hungry ghost may see it as a war, you know, as a blood and pass. You know, so even the so kind of, you know, the so the basic the idea is that if something is existing externally there, you know, then it then there should be one rule that satisfies all, one uniform that you know being applied to us. So the but the understanding of the cause and condition is that due to various cause and condition, especially your or negative men mental formations, we see different things. You know? We experience different things. Even in the same room, we can go through different experiences due to your own cause and conditions and your mental formations and you know etc. So that is the you know. And I I read somewhere that even from the scientific point of view, they say that when they check the, the smallest of the atom, I think you know they break it down. It's called the quark or something like that. So they say that when you're observing it, you know, the smallest of minute, these, I don't know, protons and neutrons act differently. When there's no observer, it acts differently. So the scientists you know, said that maybe it means that instead of thinking that the world exists and then I exist, it, the world exists because of your projection, your mind actually creates it. Right? So then it fits very much with the, you know, the understanding that, you know, that, uh, you know, for, you know, different experiences of the different six realms or pure realm, you know, it's a due to, you know, your cause and condition to Buddha Amitabha's prayer, your cause condition, that you experience different things. <clears throat> so that is why the, the Amitabha Buddha pure land, when you are, you know, the, you know, thinking, you have to think of it that way, right? Also, another example is, I think, if you have a schizophrenia, you know, you will live in a totally different world. You will talk with the different people, your whole life, you'll be surrounded by people which no one else can see. So now the third part of the prayer, you know, goes about you know, describing the Amitabha Buddha pure land in detail. You know, it says that um, you know the Amitabha Buddha pure land has a quality of the thousands of Buddhas. Different Buddhas have a different pure land, but Amitabha Buddha, before he made his aspiration, he observed the eighty thousand different. Buddha's pure land and all the best things, you know, he wished for his pure land. So may I be born into that. For example, the land is made of the, the uh, pure precious stones and there's no kind of, you know, the ravens and mountains, you know, it's basically flat, you know, like a Manhattan, you know, I guess, you know, no ups and down, no, easy to walk. So, you know, the Kuenyong, Lakhtilda, you know, and the Yangshin, spacious, Radiant light. Usually, the light in Amitabha Buddha pure land comes from Buddha Amitabha himself. And physically, physically also, Buddha Amitabha emanates light. That's why he's called Sangye Pakmen. You know, Yue means light. Pakmen means limitless light, right? 
and there's another reason for that also, but let's not get into it. Then uh, and uh, you know the earth is like a, you know like a spring, you know you put down then you know I guess then your knees won't get pain also no the knee shock absorber you know, like that. And then be beautiful, soft, spacious, and the trees you know are from the wish fulfilling jewel, and then the 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 leaves and then the lakes and in lakes also have the birds manifestation Amitabha Buddha. And they, you know, they sing in teachings and mantras when you want to, when you don't want to listen, they are silent. And they're all of the water waters have the perfumed water. You know, they are good for taste, you know, spring waters and have the quality of beneficial and the bathing, you know, the bathing pool, the steps made of precious stone, adorned with the lotuses. From the lotus also ray light, you know, manifest and in each light, in the light, there's a Buddha, different Buddhas. In the Amitabha Buddha pure land, there is no the six uh, six realms and the suffering. You know, there's not no one there. And then the or even our afflictive emotions are subdued by the Buddha Amitabha's presence, right? Which means that, for example, yes, just because you are born Amitabha Buddha pure land, immediately you are not enlightened. But due to the present and the circumstances, right? For example. You know, you go to a mountain. I don't think you know shopping will be the priority in your mind, right? If you go to the you know the shopping mall, then the desire to shop will come because of the environment, the condition. Similarly, due to Amitabha Buddha's radiance blessing and the Bodhisattva's, you know, the, the things which triggers our negative emotions will not be there. It will be subdued, and we'll have the end with the receiving the teaching and the guidance. We'll have much more. We'll have the opportunity to truly become enlightened. And there's no no one born from the mother's womb, but from the lotus. And all the same, all of them, you know, they will have the the signs of the auspicious signs, like the golden color, and you know, etc. And then, in sooner or later, they will become enlightened and have the, you know, the different abilities, ability to read mind, ability to see far, hear, hear distinctly. These are the you know, the wishing or cheng, these are the qualities that usually are, you know, a Buddha or a Bodhisattva or great meditator, they usually obtain these abilities. So may such a kind of pure land may I be born. And then the you know, the uh, palaces made of precious stones, whatever you wish for, it comes true. If you wish for a food, it appears, right? I guess it's something like, a, you know, the Google Assistant, no? You, know, you do, you know, right? No, you call it elixir or something, you know, I guess it comes, you know, right? So do make a good thing, you know, and because these things appear like that, and you as you wish, there's no, you know, nobody saying, oh, this is my property, this is my food, this is my cloth, you know, there's not like that. And all of them practice the Mahayana, you know, this type of pure land, may I be able to be born. And whenever there's a wind, winds are sent with the perfume, and then the, the trees and the waters and the lotus, you know, all of from their thing. And then there are no female, but there are gods and goddesses manifested. And if when you want, there's the palaces, you know, the soft bed or whatever that is, and this, you know, the thing. When you don't want to, everything is quiet. And then the in that land, Amitabha Buddha will live for eons and eons, but he is also Buddha of Amitayu. So as long as Buddha Amitai is there, may I be able to serve and receive his teaching. And one day, you know, even though Buddha Amitai will live for eons and eons, one day Buddha Amitai will also, you know, the kind of uh, pass into Nirvana after many, many eons. Actually, this is the reason why some masters, you know, some masters, I remember some masters, they say that they don't wish to be born into Amitabha Buddha pure land, you know. The reason for that is because in Amitabha Buddha Pure Land, positively, you know, one of the positive things is that once you are born Amitabha Buddha Pure Land, then everything is so pleasant, you know, then your negative emotions are subdued, Buddha Amitabha is there. But the negative aspect of the subdued negative emotion is you don't have that much of opportunity to work with your emotions, you know, work with negative emotion, right? For example, you go to a very nice place, you know, like a temple or somewhere and you feel very nice. But when you go back to the city, you know, you are kind of, you know, right. And because there nobody to irritate you. 
So, you know, you don't have much opportunity to practice patience. No, there's not much suffering in there. You're not much of compassion on this. You think of the suffering in the other realms. So, you know, the so say it says that it is very good there, but it takes much longer time to get enlightened. You know, if once you are kind of, you know, in the Amitabha Buddha Pyramid. So, the genuine Mahayana practitioners, you know, who Vajrayana practitioner, they say that they wish to, you know, get enlightened within this life. If not, they want to continue, you know, they have the confidence that they can come back and continue. And yes, you know, in this world, there's many suffering, but the suffering, and because of suffering, we feel pain, we feel anger, but then it's also opportunity to recognize this anger, recognize this suffering. And when you recognize it, suffering is also illusion. Anger also, you know, is illusion. Anger comes from illusion or, you know, from the illusion, dissolve back into illusion, right? That's why when you feel anger, or sadness, where does it arise from? Where does it go back into? Where does it disappear? It arises from nothingness. It goes back into nothingness. Nothingness is anger. Anger is nothingness. Waves are ocean. Ocean is a wave. Wave looks different. But even for a moment, wave has never been for a moment separated from being ocean or a water. Similarly, like that, you know, whatever emotions we have, happy, sad, whatever, from not for a moment are they separated from the natural state of the mind or empty state of the mind. That is why in the Heart Sutra they say, mind is emptiness, emptiness is mind. Other than mind, there's no emptiness. Other than emptiness, there's no mind. So for, you know, the, for you know, certain Vajrayana practitioner, they, have, they don't really make aspiration to be there, but they want to come back into the world, you know, and face these challenges. But for many people like us, you know, I think that, uh, you know, we in this life also, we are not able to do that diligently. And next life, you know, again, if we are kind of, you know, reborn without the, the strength of the spiritual practice, then it's uh, Amitabha Buddha Pyon is a much kind of, you know, slow and steady, but, you know, it's the you know, safer kind of, you know, the aspiration to make. And I think for people like us, you know, I think it's a good place to be. Mm. So anyway, the chair is the Midrashing. So any then, and then after that, Buddha Amitabha, our Lokeshwara gets enlightened. Then our Vajrapani gets enlightened. You know, then when the, mm, may I be able to serve and listen to all the practices. And then uh, in, after that, you know, may I also become enlightened either in the Amitabha Buddha pure land or in the different world. And may I also become like Amitabha, I mean, you know, uh, Amitabha Buddha Pure Land. And now it says that, you know, the Amitabha Buddha Pure Land, Amitabha Buddha or Amitayu Buddha, whoever remembers you, recites your name, you know, if they, unless their negative karma is already ripened, which means that, you know, for example, if a fruit is already ripened, you cannot kind of put it back into the seed. But let's say that tomorrow you are, you know, that you are going to have a big suffering or big sickness and it's not yet happened. You know, but then today you remember the Amitabha Buddha and do the purification, you can overcome, you know, the of dangers from the fire, the poison, you know, etc. I remember that when I was in one of the Malaysia, somebody told me that there was one prisoner, you know, he was into the prison. So long time, long prison. And then he heard that if you carve the Buddha's image, you know, then you you you, you will be, you know, you, one of the blessed Buddha will bless you to liberate from the prison. So after he finished the carving, he got a very early, unexpected early pardon and he was released from the jail. So this kind of, you know, the it is saying, you know, from the law of the cause and condition. You know, basically, whenever you talk of law of cause and condition, you have to ask yourself, you know, we, we can only have three views in the world. One view is that everything is decided by the God. The second one is there's no cause and effect. Everything is like a lucky drip, you know. If you really believe that, then, you know, basically you are saying your life has no purpose, right? You know, you eat medicine, you know, you may get better or, you know, anything can happen. For stomach medicine, you can eat the headache medicine, right? There's no cause and effect. You know, you travel to New York, you may end up in London, you know? You go forward, you may end up backward, you know? So if there's no cause and condition, there's no sense to anything that we do. But then third option, third kind of view is that you know, neither are we divine, defined by the, you know, divine being control us, nor is everything like a luck, but our action, you know, cause and conditions 
makes us experience the different experiences. So that is why the from the you know the Buddha Amitabha's blessing is there. And when we make a, a recite his name, what is that? Is a speech karma, right? When you think of the Buddha Amitabha and pray for remember him, his positive quality and generate a sense of devotion, which is a po positive karma. That is a positive karma of the mind. When you do prostration, you know, that is a positive karma of the body. You know? I remember I said this before also that. You know, I met one Singaporean friend, you know, he was telling me, oh, you guys tell us to do prayer every day, two hours. What is the point? You know, he was kind of saying in a sarcastic way, joking it to me. So I said, I don't know whether it benefits you, but your wife and children are very happy because every day they get two hour break from you. you know? <laughs> no. So in a way I was joking, but in a way, isn't it true? You know, because when you are doing prayer from your body, you are not killing anybody. You are not stealing you are not doing sexual misconduct from your speech. You know, you are reciting the mantra. You are not lying. You are not saying hurtful words. You are not gossiping bad things to other people. With your words, you are not creating disharmony between community, between family. Right? From your mind, you are not thinking of harming other, you know, coveting other people, the wrong view. You are thinking of Buddha. You are thinking of wish to benefit sentient being. And in a way, when thinking of benefiting sentient being, is actually prerequisite to doing anything, right? If you don't have the heart to benefit sentient being, actually, why will you really do it? Even if you do it, you will pretend to do it. Why? Maybe it's your corporate social responsibility. Maybe it is for tax break, you know? Maybe it makes you look very good, you know? I mean, why would you do it when they, you know, because human being's body is a so computer or a car. You know, the heart is the software. When the software to, to benefit other sentient beings is not there, why would you want to do anything to help other sentient beings? Even if you help, you will calculate it in such a way that at the end you get the benefit, you know, right? right? So that's why, you know, that mental thinking like, oh, may I be able to benefit all sentient beings may seem like a very small thing, but when your mind is tr transformed, your speech, your body, your entire way of living, your whole world is transformed if your mind is transformed. And such a kind of person who has such an altruistic mind will find a way to help in every way. You know? Maybe he may not become the president, but every word that he speaks will be of benefiting others. You know? If nothing else, he will help a, someone cross the, you know, the, right, cross the street also. Why? Because he has the wish to help. One day, if he gets opportunity to big, he will do it. You know? If you don't have the heart, even if you become the most powerful person in the world, you will you know, do things that serves your self-interest. Why? Because the heart's not there. So that's why you know, the, even the practices that we do, like the chanting, of course, if you're just sitting there and you know, just chanting from the mouth and touching your iPhone and then you know, doing what not things, you know, then there's no really a practice. But if you do just for half an hour every day, from your body, you know, in the respectful position, from your speech, not speaking to anybody, reciting the mantra or the prayer from your heart, remembering the Buddha, remembering the devotion to all sentient beings, regretting one's negative action. You know, your whole body, speech, mind is fully engaged in the positivity. There will be transformation because transformation happens from what? From the habit. You know? When you think again, again, do it again, again, you become good at it. When you do it again, again, many times, that becomes your personality. Negativity is the same. If you scold people one time, two times, short tempered, you know, sometimes people, before people used to, psychology used to say, it's good to express your emotion, anger. If you can't express, go to the empty room and shout, and, you know, maybe box something, let out your anger. But recently, you know, many, again, the psychologists, they are saying it's actually not good to do like that because every time you express anger, neural pathways develop in your brain. And once the pathways are developed, it's much more, we can, we, much easier to become angry again and again. You develop the anger neural paths in your brain. You know? So rather, rather than suppressing it or letting it kind of expressing whatever you feel, you know, rather you have to find a way to resolve it from the inside by understanding if you are a great practitioner, understanding the, you know, the non-existing nature, the union, if not impermanence, compassion, you know, what happened yesterday is today's dream. What happens today is tomorrow's dream. Does it really matter in the grand scheme of dream of things? You know, does it really matter? Even if you have to scold somebody, 
you can scold for the purpose of resolving this issue rather than out of anger. You know? So that is why mm, uh, you know, so back to the form. Mm. So you know the <clears throat> so whenever you do prayer, prayers are actually ways of you know the transforming your body, speech, and the mind. And when you do that, you know, everything you do will be beneficial to others. That's why it is said that for a bodhisattva, you know, for a bodhisattva doesn't need to say that, oh, for me, now I'm helping or now I'm not helping. Whatever they say from the morning, they open their mouth till they, you know, is will be beneficial. Maybe they are doing business, but it will, at the end, it will benefit the world, environment and sentient being. Maybe they are a king, you know, like King of Bhutan. He's a king, but I think he is the only king in the world or any leader in the world I've heard say that I care not only for my citizen, but for, as a Buddhist king, for all the sentient beings. And I never heard any world leader say like that. Most of the world leader, you know, I think that they always say, my country first, or maybe my party first, you know, right? Who, where is their leader in the world that says, I care for all the sentient beings, right? That's why we call the king of Bhutan Bodhisattva king, you know? So that's why, you know, the Bodhisattva, you know, doesn't have to be a monk or a nun or, you know, the, but one who has, no other interest but for benefiting others is a bodhisattva. And whatever that person does will become, you know, the six bar, become a bodhisattva practice. No. So that is why the mm, this um, this sort of you know the prayers, etc., are ways of you know the quite an important part of practice. You know, the that may everything be auspicious for myself and all the sentient beings. And then, you know, by the truth of the Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha, whatever aspiration that I'm making, may it come true. Then, three. And then you do the shorter, you know, the Amitabha. And here it says that. If you can, you know, you do can you can do at least three prostration after that, with after your aspiration. If you can, you do this prayer every day. If you if you can't do it every day, do it maybe on the you know on the eight, the fifteen, or the thirtieth of the auspicious months. You know, look look towards the western direction and remember Buddha Amitabha Buddha, Amitabha Buddha, his him, his pure land, his compassion, and and do the aspiration, you know, because when you do this Amitabha Buddha prayer, in a one way you are accumulating merit purification, but in a one way also you are preparing to, you know, preparing to die, preparing to go one day, you know, and we all have to go. And in preparing to go, attachment is reduced. When the attachment is reduced, hatred is reduced. You know? We have a hatred because we think we will be there forever, he will be there forever. We have attachment because we think this is my house forever. I'll be here forever. I'll be famous forever. Why did you, you defame me, right? Because we think we'll eat in the fame is something forever. No. So that is why, you know, the Amitabha Buddha prayer will also help to transform your mind. So every day, and I think is recommended. So I hope that uh, Drupa centers in USA, in all the Americas, you know, we'll have a start a tradition of doing the Temen Geba you know, at least uh, two, three times a month on the Drupa Center. And once you are very familiar with Amitabha Buddha, Pure Land, next time we do the retreat, next time I come to, maybe next time I'll be teaching in Brazil and doing Zoom to other country, or, no, or maybe it's Peru, I do not know, maybe in USA again, then we will we will teach about the Amitabha Buddha from the Vajrayana perspective. You know? It's a little bit different because from Vajrayana perspective, Amitabha Buddha, the uh, Amitabha Buddha actually represents the emptiness, the shunyata, you know, and the shunyata represents the possibility, you know, because if there was, if everything was, you know, if the thing was inherently not existing, nothing will be possible, right? For example, if this flower, you know, was inherently existing, petal was a petal, or the pit was whatever it is, then none of this can come together and become a flower, right? Because there's no such a thing as flower existing, that is why 
right cause and condition came, things become flour, things become ice cream, things become grass, you know, and the milk becomes our part of our body and our whatever, our toilet goes slowly into the ocean, you know, and the soil and then get recycled. Our, our dirty, everything goes ocean, ocean, oceans from the, 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 water, the water goes up into the cloud, cloud comes forms and rain and we drink the water, you no, know, right? So we have recycled our own, you know, the everything also, you no, know, you know. So all of these things are possible because none of these have inherent reality. So in, that's why in the Vajrayana, the point of view, Amitabha Buddha is Dharmakaya. Amitabha Buddha represents the Shunyata, the non-existing nature. And from there, the first kind of the form is our Lukteshwara, the Amit, you know, the Sambhukakaya. And then the, from our Lukteshwara comes the Nirmanakaya, Guru Padma Sambhava. So Vajrayana way of you know, Amitabha approach is a little bit different. It's a much more personal, you know? but it also at the same time to practice the Vajrayana, you need the foundation, foundation practice, you need the initiation, you need the understand the visualization, etc. So I think that right now you all are practicing Jagani Yogi, you know, that some are practicing Tara. Those who finish the Tara two million times should go to us, move to Dragon Yogi, you know. So that's why I think you have enough, you know, there's no point in giving so many homework when you know the student may you know give it up you know and then because when i gave wanted to give amitabha teaching the first thing i heard some people were saying is after this what is the homework you know they are very worried about the homework you know? so today i gave you guarantee no homework with this you know all you have to do is on the special occasions you know just read the sutra even if you don't know visualization is okay just remember the buddha amitabha and his pure land and for yourself and every sentient being who are each and every second, you know, billions of billions of animals, sentient beings are dying every day, every minute. So to pray for all the sentient beings, you know, they're not only billion, I think, if you think of the universe, you know, the countless beings are dying each and every moment. So pray for them, right? And that will also, it's, in a, it's a sutrayana way of preparing yourself and is learning the poa, you know, and it will also prepare you for the Vajrayana way of practicing the Amitabha Buddha. Okay. Mm. Then the, after that, if you can't do that, then every day in the night, maybe in the night is good. If not, at least once a day, then you can do the short Amitabha Buddha, which is the Ema Mazar Sangi Nawataida. That is the one that uh, Buddha Amitabha himself taught to Tukumingyu Dorji when he was 13 years old. So here the words are very simple, you know, Buddha Amitabha in the middle, right hand is our Lokteshwara, left hand is, you know, the uh, Buddha Vajrapani, surrounded by thousands of Buddha, you know, in the pure land of the our, our Sukhavati. As soon as I leave this, you know, the my mind, I my I leave this body, may I not be born into other other, you know, I don't want to born into the six realms, animal, human, God, but I just want to go to Amitabha Buddha pure land and may I see your face. And may I, whatever aspiration I have made, I hope that Guru Rinpoche, Chizim Jama, all the Buddhas will bless me so that my aspiration will come true. Nayata Pinsadji, our Buddha, Nay Soha. This is the one taught by Amitabha Buddha. And then the next one is Chukumingyu Dorji himself, I think. So the next one is the Chodigya Vasejik one. This one is a little bit more elaborate. All the Buddhas of 10 direction, please listen. And you know, the, you, have, you have accumulated merit, you have accumulated you know, wisdom, I have so much of respect and admiration for that. Whatever good karma I have done from my body, speech, and mind, I offer to Buddha. May all sentient, may the Buddha Dhamma flourish. And that merit I dedicate to all sentient beings. May every sentient being be enlightened, right? This is important because one of the criteria of Amitabha Buddha, uh, to be born Amitabha Buddha Pure Land is the bodhicitta, the wish to pray for all sentient beings. And then what? And after all sentient beings are enlightened, may I receive the merit, and may I also purify and realize the wisdom and accumulation of merit. May I have a good health, longevity. May I, my realization increase in this life. May I reach the tenth bhumi, and when I die one day, may I be born into Amitabha Buddha Pure Land, and may the lotus open immediately, and in within that body, may I be able to get enlightened, and until the samsara is empty, may I manifest and liberate the sentient being. So this is the short, you know, the, the one, you know. So, mm. so now let's do the 
prayer first and then we'll do the q and a mm. okay. let's do the q and a first i think long give me traditional yeah so i got some answer i think the she kindly gave me the answers from questions from i think the Drupal south america so first is how to help an animal to be reborn in the realm of the humans well I, it is said that you know you have to create a comic connection as i mentioned earlier so when you you know when there's animal around you if you can you know re recite amitabha buddha's name in the his his ear you know or maybe give some you know some sort of a sacred things you know, maybe a blessing or, you know or maybe take to a temple or some create some sort of connection it is said that if anyone who recites the name of the Amitabha, here hears the name of Amitabha Buddha, will not go to the lower realm and be connected. So I guess that is one way of helping. How to help a person in the process of death? I think that's what we have been going through for the past four days. But you know, to again, you know, main thing is you have to tell them first is not to be attached. You no, know? everything is impermanent. You no. Know? And it's not only impermanent, but even the idea of the permanency is illusion. Everything is changing from moment to moment. You know? they, it's, a, it's a life itself is like a dream. So reducing the attachment, whatever you have offered to the Buddha, at least from your mind, remembering Amitabha Buddha, whatever negative karma one has done, confess and purify in front of Amitabha Buddha, you know, and make the aspiration to be born in Amitabha Buddha pure land with the four qualities, you know? visualizing Amitabha Buddha, remembering Amitabha Buddha in his pure land, accumulating merit and purification, uh, and then taking the bodhicitta, I wish to be reborn into Amitabha Buddha pure land for myself and all sentient beings, and then doing the dedication. You know? Even if you can't speak, at least from your mind, you, you can do that. You know? So that is why... Mm, you know, actually, the, I remember one of the one time there was a prayer of a Buddha of Compassion, invocation of Buddha of Compassion by His Holiness the Gyawang Dupa. You know, in that the last word was very beautiful. It said that when I'm about to die, you know, rather than dying with the fear that I am going to die, what will happen to me? May I understand that how many sentient beings are right now, you know, about to die and have so much pain because they have to leave their father behind, mother, wife family because of so much attachment you know through my practice through my prayer may i be able to take on the suffer all of their fear and through my practice you know may i be able to benefit all the beings who are about to die right now so instead of focusing on one individual's pain when you think of every sentient being they're going through and have the commitment to be you know the to die with the you know the kind of courage to liberate all of them in the Pado realm you know, I think that is something, you know, that, that's, I think, the, you know, the, what you call the true courage, no? Mm. Uh, and the, is the Tibetan book of dead and good option to prepare us for death? I think is yes, of course. Tibetan book of the dead is a very good, but at the same time, you know, you also have to acknowledge that understanding the pardo and all of that, you know, understanding pardo itself doesn't help, you know? Because the understanding of the pardo is actually, you know, the pardo is, you know, like a, it's like a, you know, the roadmap, right? For example, yes, it's in the pardo, from the pardo teaching, you will understand that at this time, this will happen. You will see your parents like this and this. You will see many scary things. And then at that time, do not be afraid, right? Right? Yes, you understand it. But if you in day-to-day -day life, if you have not practiced it, you know, how will you overcome fear, right? Forget about the pardo, right? I remember one day my guru taught, guru was joking that in one of his teaching, you know, that forget about the pardo, right? If there's earthquake, you know, I think we'll forget all our prayer and leave our bell and drum and run away, you know, right? So he, I, he was joking that if there's earthquake, you know, yes, you have to run, but at least run with the slowly, you know, <laughs> with little bit of awareness, you no, know? there's a fear coming, but you know, look at the nature of the fear, you know, the slowly, right? When you feel, if you are someone who's scared of a spider or a mouse or something, you know, instead of letting the fear overwhelm you, when the fear arises, you know, look into that fear, look into that emotion, you know, what does this emotion look like? Where is the fear? You know, slowly 
And then you can run away from the mouth, you know, but slowly, if you want to practice, you know, right now we don't look like we don't, we have a one, we generate one emotion and without any logic or reason, oh, there is a mouse, there is a spider, there is this, you know, we get like a, you know, we let our over emotion overwhelm us, you know, right? So it's like, you know, the, this I think, you know, you, you know, in many experiences, right? Some people are afraid of different, different things, you no? Know? I remember at one time, you know, I was, um, we were doing a retreat in a place in one of the part of Bhutan, you know, where right? you have to walk three days and, you know, and there's no electricity there. And the restroom that we had to go was very far, you know, it's about five minutes walk. You know, it was very dark, you know, so I always feel a little bit of fear, you know, not only of the spirit, because it's a very sacred place, so you feel, but also because so many wild animals can come, bear can come, tiger can come, you know. So I was thinking about, thinking, oh, you know, we talk a lot, you know, but, you know, in actually in reality, even a little bit of darkness, we can't take how, what will happen if we are really in the bardo, you no? Know? So usually I go quickly, but that time I stayed down for a few minutes, you know, <laughs> a little bit longer than usual, you know, and then, you know, when the fear was coming, you know, just look into the fear, you know, it's fear, right? You know? Like, for example, right, you know, when you see flower, we don't, don't leave it as it is, you no know, images, ah, oh, beautiful flower, expensive, from where it got, let me know how to find, next time I want to buy it myself, you know, we have so many projections, you know, but if you just leave the flower as it is, flower is neither beautiful, nor is it ugly, nor is it expensive, nor is it cheap, you know, you know, all of these kind of the expensive, valuable, you know, all of these are our projection. The reality of flower is beyond beauty or beyond ugly, right? Similarly, nobody is famous, nobody is, is all our concept. You know? I remember joking once that in our, I think many of you may not know, but in our back in the Himalayan region, you know, the, there's an actor called Amitabh Bachchan, you know, very famous, so, you know, many people, you know, I remember one of my guru taught me also that there is a one yogi with him in the Paris. And usually he acts very calm. He acts like a yogi and everything is Chimbu emptiness. But one day he said, that he's, my guru's student was getting so excited, you know. Oh, your holiness, your holiness. He couldn't speak, you know. The only said, what happened? What happened? You know, Michael Jackson is there, you know, like, you know, right? You know, right? Because Michael Jackson is so amazing because your concept have, you know, like blown up the Michael Jackson into something amazing, right? So I said, let's imagine that Michael Jackson or somebody, you know, you think is a great, does something that is very ordinary human, right? Maybe he slips and falls down. Maybe he farts a bit, you know, and fart is smelly also. So, oh my God, Michael Jackson also farts, you know, amazing, you know, right? Suddenly your perception will go like, and he's become a human being, you no, know, right? In a reality, just because he fought doesn't make him bad. Just because he sings well does not make him great. You know, his reality is beyond neither great or nor nobody. It is your concept, you know, right? So similarly, you know, when you feel fear also, you know, it's your concept that says this is dangerous. This, you know, reality of the concept, reality of nature is beyond, you know, beyond such a definition. Everything is thoughts, form, see, right? So you have to be able to, you know, the, the what do you call it, you know? If you can, you know, so that's what to do that in this life. And one of the reasons why we cannot, you know, the why we do offerings is because we cannot let go of this attachment to this concept of the flower. We can let go of the flower is easy. We can throw it away. But for let go of the our attachment to the concept of the flower is more difficult. We can let go of our husband, wife, if easy. But to let go of the concept, the husband is a husband, you know. And even after divorce for two years, he's still dating somebody. You get irritated. You can't let go, right? Let go of the concept is the biggest problem. If you don't have a concept, you know, you know, even in the front, you know, how many people are doing what not things in front of you doesn't really affect you, you no, know? right? So the you know the so that is why in day to day life, if you do not practice, you know, practice little bit, maybe it's a tara, maybe it's a wonder. You know, whatever, if you don't let go, settle in the pardo, ah, oh, you know, okay, now I read the book, you know, ah, oh, no worries. I can see my whole world's burning and the fire mountain, but 10 years ago, I read some book, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, you know, I do it very difficult, you know, that will not be, I don't think it's that easy, you know, actually, in order to be, in order, it is said that uh, I remember, you know, I remember if someone does, in some, if someone in his dream, can you recognize a dream is a dream for seven consecutive day, nights? 
then that part, part person can recognize the pardo, right? You know, that means, right, when you are sleeping, can we recognize it? When we're dreaming, do we get carried away by the happy dream or sad? Or can you say, oh, this is a dream, right? When you are someone who really doesn't get carried away, there will come a time when even when you're dreaming, you know that you are dreaming. So if you can recognize your dream for seven consecutively, one time it might happen due to fluke or some positive karma, but seven, seven night, then you can know for sure that you will not be carried away in Pardo. So it's not that. I think, of course, Tibetan book of living and dying is very good. I hardly rec highly recommend all of the sutra. Any teaching is there to benefit us, but you know, is it a knowledge or is it a practice? No. Knowledge and wisdoms are very different. You know, knowledge is information. Even Google has it, your iPhone has it, no? But wisdom is when this knowledge has merged with your, your whole mind, who you are, how you look at the world, how you, you know, that is the wisdom. So that is, I think you have to ask yourself. Now his eminence, uh, so I think for many people, I think just Amitabha Buddha practice, it's uh, good enough. It says that his eminence mentioned that one can choose where to reborn his next life. It was my understanding that this was according to each individual's karma. That, that being said, we have the privilege to choose if we prepare ourselves before. No? Yes, because the act of preparation itself is a karma. No, isn't that so? When you are, you know, from your body, what you are, what you do, practice your way of living, your speech, your thinking, your meditation practice, that itself is a karma, no? right? And that prepares you. And if you prepare well, you will have the ability to determine. Does the consciousness remain in the inner body for three, seven, or nine days, or does it depend on preparation of each human being? If you are a great yogi, then you can remain in the body for, you know, some they remain for, if they recognize the nature of their mind, then recognize the, they stay for many days, weeks. Of ordinary people, I do not think so, but it is recommended that at least not, not to touch the body, you know, for at least like a you know, few hours or maybe, you know, as long as possible, you know, especially if they are practitioner, you know, so that their person has the opportunity to recognize the emotions shutting down, brother, you know, and then when you touch also, you touch on the crown of their head with something sacred, so the consciousness can come out from the, you know, where they can be, have a reborn in the, you know, the higher rebirth. It is said, ego or self-illusion is the domain of ultimate truth. There's no separation between me and others. But it's also said I'll be reborn according to karma. If so, to whom does the karma belong to and who is the one that is reborn according to that karma? No? If you have realized that, yeah, you know, the shunyata, if you realize the non dualistic nature, then you are right. You know, there is a very, the very definition of born or not born. You are free of all of this, right? But until you are, until you have not realized the nature of the mind, you are bound by the law of the karma, right? Yes, one day there may come a time when you say he's no longer my enemy, he's no longer my you know, person that I hate most in the world. Yes, true. One day they may come because you realize that, that you know that what you hate is your projection. But until you as long as you are bound by the concept of he is my enemy, as soon as you see him, you'll get your blood pressure will go up. You will get high, even though it is not real, it's an illusion. It doesn't inherently exist. But as long as you are bound by the dualistic concept, it is real for you. It may be real that when you wake up, dream is an illusion. But until you wake up, dream is real for you. So that is why we have Buddha said, separate the relative truth and ultimate truth. Ultimate truth is non-dualistic wisdom, shunyata. But right now, we are bound by the dualistic concept. And where there is a dualistic, where there is expensive, there is a cheap. Where there is a beautiful, there is a ugly. Where there is a happiness, there is a suffering. No? If, there, if you don't have a concept of happiness, how would you define suffering? No? So that's why wherever there is dualistic, we are bound by the law of the karma. After death of loved one, how many days after the moment of death advisable to proceed to crime? As I mentioned earlier, you know, I think if someone is a practitioner, there at least few days. If a normal person, at least... I think, you know, a few hours or one, two hours, as long you can give, I think is recommended. Then uh, in terms of mourning, you know, I think that, uh, yes, I, I will say that, you know, it's, I think rather than mourning, you know, I think better do prayer, you know, better do prayer, good deed, practice. You know, I think that will be much more, you know, the, you know, I think, you know, that uh, much more, I think, beneficial to him. 
you know, I think we also have to console ourselves, you know, that uh, this is a part that we all have to take and what we can do at, you know, beneficial at this most you know, is to doing all the prayers and good deeds, good karma in dedication to him. Uh, I understand that one can access the pure land through aspiration. This means that one does not need to be enlightened and access in that sense, in pure land is not some sort of, not in which type of mental state or reborn in pure land. So pure land is not a samsara, not a samsara in the sense that it's a sixth realm, but it's also samsara in the sense that you are not enlightened. Everybody who is born into a pure land doesn't immediately become enlightened. That is why pure land is a place where you can practice the Dharma in a perfect condition and under the guidance of the Buddhas and Bodhisattva. Right? So that is the, so what type of mental state is the mental state, you know, who creates the, that four kind of conditions to be reborn, Amitabha Buddha Pure Land, will be reborn there. After a year of death, is there, any, is there any prayer, what to do? Does it work through meditation to give peaceful wife? If it's reincarnate, is it worth doing? So in our Himalayan tradition, yes, it is true that after somebody dies, if we have the anniversary, you know, one year we call Lochu, we do the prayer, but the prayer that we do is different. For example, when you are doing prayer for the dying, for a person who recently passed away, then we do the prayer, you know, the where you are, where you kind of, you know, the by the name, by the truth of the Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha, wherever the consciousness is, we draw the consciousness into that figurine or the paper and then give them a teaching of refuge, initiation, Amitabha Buddha, you know, give him a teaching of impermanence, how to let go. And then give him guidance on how to go to Amitabha Buddha Pure Land, you know, give him the blessing. And that is a way of guiding. But when you do pray after one year, so of course, sometimes you can do it because some people can get stuck in the Pardo for a long time. But generally speaking, after one year, when we do prayer for the disease, we don't do prayer as if we are doing for a person who has died. But we do prayer, for example, like offering to Buddhas and Bodhisattva, accumulating merit and purification. So wherever they are, you know, has been born, they will have a blessing, they will have a good health, they will meet with the Dharma, we can benefit them in some way. So that is the, the difference between the how we do the, the 49 day prayer and the we do prayer after one year, the Lodge, or the long chair. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So I think with that, I think we finished the question on the Q&A and uh, let's do the prayer, mm. the final part. Sangi Chot Sangi Chot Sangit <laughs> Gajuan Nenai <laughs> Tanam, 
ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、
to me. Thank you. Tomorrow, if you are, I think you're already aware of the program, but uh, in, in case you are not, especially those from the South Americans, so tomorrow morning we will be doing Amitabha Buddha uh, practice in the Vajrayana tradition. Uh, the practice is, was composed by Tuvang Shakeshiri. So Shakeshiri was a great disciple of the sixth Gyo Dokampa. And he was said to be such a great yogi that he was equal to Milarepa. And, uh, you know, that um, all of his, especially in the six yogas of Naropa. So, right now, all the na six yogas of Naropa, which are presently, you know, the practiced, comes from the Shakeshri. For example, in Bhutan, the Shakeshri's disciple, one of his disciples was. Uh, I think Tuang Tenzin Jamso, Tuang Tenzin Jamso's disciple was Chedi Chirumbushe, and then the present Che, so the also comes from the Shakeshri, you know, and then also the Shakeshri's disciple was the Tujik Pema Chigil, Pema Chigil was Levin Gyawan Drupa, Tuxirumbushe, present Gyawan Drupa. So all of the, you know, the Drupa lineage masters, especially the six yoga lineages, comes from the great master Shakeshri. You know, who was known as equal to Milarepa himself, who, you know, like uh, in, as a sign of realization, one day, the six, after he finished the three year retreat, six Gewa Dokamba asked him, Show me a, some, you know, some sort of a realization. And then he showed the whole mountain. And in the whole, in the one side of the mountain, he showed the four seasons at the same time, you know, summer, spring happening at the same time. To, to show to his guru, you know, his level of realization. So anyway, the Shakeshri is known as one of the, I think we did share his biography a few, few, I think few months ago. Mm. So he composed the Amitabha Buddha prayer the, because he said that in his realization, he saw Amitabha Buddha, Amitabha Buddha and, you know, received this practice and he's sharing it. So tomorrow morning we'll be practicing that Shakeshri is Amitabha Buddha practice is a very short lineage. So Shakyashiri to, you know, the uh, between us and Shakyashiri, but the, um, between Amitabha, Shakyashiri and us, I think there's only four or five human masters. So the lineage is very short. So it has a lot of prof profound blessing. In the morning, we'll be doing what is called Changwa. So Changwa is, you know, you, uh, wherever the, you know, the especially dedicated to every body, every being who ever died, but especially dedicated to the, sort of a you know covid memorial during the covid i think we all have lost so many people from around the world you know especially in the americas so dedicated to them so changwa is where you if there are people still you know roaming around in the pardo realm their consciousness is called into the the mingjang and then giving the refuge bodhicitta food guidance initiation and then you know transfer their consciousness to amitabha buddha pure land so this will be done in the morning part and then after lunch, I think is the Amitabha Buddha's initiation itself. So this is the kind of the happening for, especially from the, I think for South Americans, I think you may not be aware of the detail of the what's happening tomorrow. Okay. Mm, thank you. If you wish to send names of the people, who, people you have lost, I know, please uh, contact the Drupa USA organizer. Send them the list, and we will do them. Add them in our prayer and pray pray for them by the name tomorrow. Thank you. 
Um, Jimmy, la, the speaker from Brazil. Okay. Yeah, beloved Zimbabwe, we bow down to your Lord's feet, and we surrender ourselves to your blessings that come to us as an actor that relieves the inner burn of doubts and affliction in our heart mind. Fallen under your immeasurable compassion and love towards each one of us, we aspire and we make the formal vows. May we, in this very life, be able to take your wisdom words as the Buddha fingers pointed out to us, the direct path to Amitabha Buddha's pure land. May we follow the days that still will come as the greatest opportunity to engage in sincere virtuous deeds. And thanks to the genuine renunciation that comes from the knowing of the true nature of our phenomena and the true nature of our mind, may we engage in all the purification that will release the views that cover our true nature. And by the single-pointed mind of a bodhicitta, may we be joyfully propelled to apply all your pressure instructions, Rinpoche. May, in the crucial moment of our death, or during the ultimate reality's battle, by the power of the devotion towards you, may we see your face, Rinpoche, indicating the light path direction to be followed. As the fruit of the two proposed, may we attain our own benefit, but also may we attain the more crucial benefit of others. And by the obtainment of the rebirth in Amitabha's Pure Land, so that in this occasion we can reach the final perfect and completely Buddhahood after traverse the tenth booms and become like you, Rinpoche, also also a safe refuge for all sentient beings. And now, Rinpoche, in this very moment, may we be able to honor Rinpoche's enlightened activities, making our lives meaningful by becoming the bridge for the relief of the suffering of beings, as the same your eminence bestows to us every day. Please, Gyaldo Kampa Rinpoche, Accept our heartfelt thank you so much for all that Rinpoche are offering to us and to all beings around the world. Thank you so much, Rinpoche, for bestowing the blessings of ultimate Drupa lineage, showing the unfailed path towards Buddhahood. And finally, Rinpoche, with all of us with the hands in prayer, we all request, please, Rinpoche, May you very soon be again in America. And in that time also, please, please, please come to Brazil, to Brazilian land. And from here, also follow spreading your holy guidance in all the direction. Thanks so much, Rinpoche. I remove my vows under your lotus feet. Hello. Um, I would like to Robert Robert Cassis, the admin. Can you please uh, can you please spotlight uh, Peru? Uh, Sorry, Mexico. Hello. Mexico. Can you please spotlight Mexico so we can see it on the screen? I can't find the Zoom. This is. I, I don't know how to spot. Do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. And um, um, well, I'm the guy with the glasses and uh, the green, um, how do you say, a green screen behind me. <laughs> do you, can, uh, that's me. That's me. There you go. You're here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Ripoche, I didn't. I didn't write anything because uh, I don't know why. But I was listening to you. Really, I appreciate. Well, I, for sure, the Sangha of Mexico. I'm for sure all. Your um, all the people who have been with you at this time and this life, we appreciate a lot your generosity. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, 
to inspire and your inspiration. Today, I, I was reading at the practice and wonderful things happened to me. I think it happens to all. Thank you very much. I have too many emotions, but thank you very much. It's our heart is with you. Thank you very much. That's it. Thank you. Who's next? Um, <laughs> Peru, Carla, could, this, could someone? Um, sorry, one second, I'll pin you. Here I am. What? Okay, Hi. we got you. Yeah. Okay, I have written because my English is not so well, so I will read. Uh, thank you for those amazing teachings. We feel blessed for the opportunity of having such profound Dharma teachings. In Rupa, Peru, we are compromised and are working very hard to continue growing and cons consolidating. This kind of events, with its beautiful teachings motivate us even more. We have been blessed to have a Lopon with us in our center. We are very grateful because it allows us to continue learning and growing. We know how important the Dharma is, especially at this complicated time in humanity. More than ever, we need to be guided towards more clarity wisdom and compassion. We will do our utmost to transmit this profound Dharma to those we can reach. Your eminence, you are a great inspiration for all us. With gratitude and love, Drupa Peru. Thank you. Yes, um, Drupa USA. and all the participants. I would like to thank them for such a wonderful teaching and I'm proud to be such a the guy. The four-day journey so far has truly been an eye-opening moment and something we really needed, especially after the 2020 global pandemic. We truly are grateful to have Rinpoche here with us. We live in the technology and social media generation, and thanks to that, we are able to connect to about 180 sanghas uh, from Drupa centers of Brazil, Peru, Mexico, joining virtually through Zoom every day and more than 100 connecting through Facebook Live. La. We are indeed very fortunate that Rinpoche will also be doing the Jama prayers for the disease and providing Amitabha Buddha initiation tomorrow. The center will be live scream, uh, streaming the program on both Facebook and Zoom tomorrow la, as well for Amitabha initiation starting at 10 a.m. so that our international participants and other Drupa centers will also be able to share the blessing and and the fruitful five-day initiation with us together. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. Did you want to see a lot of